April Fools. In this video we talk about the origins and folklore traditions of April Fools Day and the Fool Tarot card. Hello, I'm Max Raven. And I'm Cassandra Raven. Together we have over 30 years experience in the occult, witchcraft and magic. We share insight, knowledge, advice and lifestyle tips to make your magic go further and add potency to your work. April Fool's Day falls on April 1st. The origin of April Fool's Day is a matter of much debate. The most common theory is that it comes from France in the Middle Ages, when the calendar was swapped from the Julian to the Gregorian, effectively moving New Year's Day from April 1st to January 1st. The tradition of mocking those who still celebrated it on the April date started around that time. It is, however, unclear where the rule that all pranks must finish by 12 noon originates, but those that are causing mischief after 12 are considered the April Fools themselves. Lesser known, and my personal favourite, origin of April Fools Day comes from the 13th century in British folklore. It is associated with Gotham in Nottinghamshire. According to legend, King John decided to acquire some of the land of Gotham for a hunting lodge. Naturally, this was not well received by the townsfolk, and they hatched a cunning plan to deceive the king. When the king's men arrived in the town, they found the populace doing all sorts of crazy things, such as trying to drown fish. The trickery persuaded the king's men to look for another location for his hunting lodge. In legend, April, Day, April Fool's Day commemorates this trickery. The Fool Card the Fool card isn't quite the Fool that you would expect. He represents complete innocence, a new beginning and a blank page. Rather like the neophytes starting out on their spiritual journey, there's an innocence but also a foolishness in wanting to proceed quickly and experience everything. The joke of the Fool card is that it represents nothing and yet everything all at once. But it is the potential at the very beginning of the journey into manifestation, so it can be viewed as containing everything. Keywords associated with the full card are creation, new beginnings, new ideas and potential. It's linked with springtime and the element of air, which is also linked to thought and the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. In a tarot reading, this could apply to a new job, a new endeavour in some way, depending on the position in the spread and the surrounding cards. So I'm going to show some full cards and actually a joker card as well. And I'm just going to hold this up to you guys, but we'll put that on the screen as well. Now the joker card in a normal pack of playing cards mm -hmm. is known as the wild card. It can, as the full card does, represent absolutely anything. Yes, it, it's everything and nothing, so everything it is very nothing. much the same system. Mm -hmm. Because you know, a lot of the tarot cards originally would have been playing cards, which would have then had meanings associated yes, with Yes, and actually we do know of people that do tarot readings as such with playing cards. So they read playing cards in the way that uh, perhaps you would read tarot cards. Um, and it's an interesting way to do it, because especially in times when you needed to keep hidden, Mm. that you could read tarot cards or that, you know, it's just an yeah, innocent it's, game. It's, it's, it's hidden in plain sight. So, yeah, it's hidden in plain sight. Um, the second card that we'd like to show you is the 1JJ Swiss tarot deck um, fool there. And this guy, I really, really like the image on this one. He's certainly very playful. Um, and I love the, the sort of um, uniform or the um, costume that he's wearing. Um, more reminiscent, really, of a jester. Yes. And I love the connection between the fool and the jester, the idea that he's a sort of capering, fun-loving kind of, um, mm. you know, he's got that kind of innocence about him and silliness, and yet he's supposed to be, particularly within the court, the most intelligent. Yes. So conversely, there's, there's the two sides of him, there's the two sort of It's the aspects. one person in the court that could speak their mind and speak plainly to the king. Mm. So they're the only one that could say you're being an idiot, Yeah. but can do it in a joyful way. Exactly, exactly. So I, I personally, I like that one because of the depiction on it. The next card we have here is the Fall from the Golden Dawn tarot deck and the golden dawn version um for me it's it this isn't the tarot deck that i would normally use 
Um, so for me, it's not quite um, the same sort of symbology that I would usually link in with. However, um, what's shown on here is um, the fact that the card is number zero. Um, and we've got the young child there um, plucking the, the flower or the fruit from the tree, um, you know, sort of tree of knowledge. Mm. Um, and then, you know, having that sort of Garden of Eden experience where, you know, yeah. you're not supposed to know. Um, and if you eat the fruit, then you will know. Uh, quite like the wolf behind him. Um, but it's, it, it's, for me, this card isn't, it doesn't have enough of the imagery. No, it in doesn't. It for me. Um, so it's, that's, it's not a card that I would usually use, but it's good for comparison. Always good to look to compare the different cards. And the next card we have is the Rider Waite version of the full card. Um, I really like this one because I love the way he's just stepping over a cliff. Yes. As if to as if to say, oh, you know, completely unaware of what's going on around him. He's got his head turned up. He's got his eyes closed. Um, he's completely unaware that he's stepping into uh, the abyss, basically. <laughs> but, he's, yeah. but he's, you know, he's just continuing on his journey. He's the start of the journey. And he's totally unaware of what's ahead of him. Yeah. So um, I rather like that. I like the fact that he's holding a white rose as well um, to represent purity and innocence. Mm. And I love the dog, um, you know, almost jumping up at him as if to say, stop. You're being an you idiot. Know, stop it. Stop it. Edge, stop it. Uh, but he is blissfully unaware, of course. Um, he's got also his his um, possessions with him, mm -hmm. which represented a reading, uh, you know, that you've got everything that you need in order to start your journey. And a lot of people sort of think, oh, I can't start until this has happened or I've got this or, or mm. I've got that. Um, and when the card comes up in a reading often, it's to say, actually, you have everything you need and you can start now. Yeah. Um, so I like that that part of it as well. So lastly, we have the uh, the full card from the Thoth deck. And this is my favourite deck to use mm. in terms of teaching, in terms of tarot readings um, and tarot in general, because it is so full of symbology. It really is packed with symbology. Um, and I love that. You know, for me, it speaks volumes in terms of the, the meaning that's held within the card. And I love the fact that it it's not just a very simplistic card because the fool could be. The fool could be just, you know, the most simple card could just be a zero on a card yes. um, because it, you know, it represents everything and yet nothing at the same time. Um, and what they've done with the Thoth deck is they've crammed everything in. Yeah, um, it, it is know, everything. It is everything. So it's, it's lovely. It's a really, really nice card. Um, so as you're looking at the card, what I like particularly about this one is the dynamic um, aspects of it. The fact that he's jumping out of the card at you, um, not just stepping over a cliff, but positively leaping at yes. you. Um, it's one of the only cards in the deck that actually you can see the eyes of the character. Mm -hmm. um, but he looks quite spaced out. He looks almost as if he's just, just you know, an airhead. Wide-eyed wide or yeah. everything and just... Everything and yeah. nothing, all in the same, all in the same card. Um, so some of the symbology here, you'll notice that he has um, the bag full of his possessions. Um, in his right hand, he's actually got a, a chalice and he's pouring out um, all kinds of things from the chalice that, the, that are coming out there, but it is to represent the fact that he has everything that he needs. All the elements are represented in this card. Um, and instead of a dog, we have a tiger this time. Um, and the tiger is sort of munching on his thigh as if to say, what are you doing? It's you know, a, it's and it's a bit, a, bit it's more serious this time. Be, yeah, it's a bit of a distraction. It's a bit of a kind of, hey, you know, this is going on, but he is completely oblivious to it. Um, it's a lovely card. The card is innocence. Um, and I love that in the card as well that, you know, you've got this huge rainbow swirling all around it. Mm. All the colours of the rainbow. It contains everything. Um, and again, that's what's so nice about it. I could talk for a very long time about the symbology within this card. Um, which I think we'll, we could do in another video. We could yeah, cover just could that do, do a in a video, video for itself. Um, but, you know, it, it is such a clear image and it's such a, a so full of information um, that it's a really, really striking card and my favourite um, deck as well to use. We've got the symbol for Aleph at the bottom as well, if you can see that at the bottom there, um, and the triangle to represent air. So it's, it's an exciting exciting card yeah i think it's, 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 it's new a, beginnings it's a new start um yeah. you know and it's it's just so vibrant and so definitely i always like it when the full full card comes up because it is the what well, is that it's that potential and mm. it's going 
sometimes it's also like the element of chaos, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's, so that's the innocence behind yeah. it. It's, it's that wild card where you go, okay, there's a change coming and the full card comes up and you go, mm. amazing. This is going to be something completely new. Mm. Mm. So it, it's a, a brilliant, brilliant card. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've spoken about the full cards. We've spoken about um, different cards from different decks, but I'd like to go very briefly into what it means to have the full card in a reading. Because a lot of people do use tarot um, to do readings with. It's not just a tool to learn about yourself, to learn about the occult, to learn about magic. Um, obviously, it is also a divination tool. Mm. Primarily, I think it's really a representation of your own spiritual journey, but that's the other side of using yeah. the tarot. I think really. most people will come across it in the uh, divination, so telling your fortune. Mm. So it's going to depend um, where it is in the reading. So as you're doing your tarot spread, um, it depends whichever spread you're doing, it will have different meanings according to where the card actually turns up in the reading. And then also the cards either side of it or the cards surrounding it within the reading can alter the um, the flavour or the uh, theme of that particular card mm. as well. So it's not just the card itself, it's the cards around it. And that's important to remember. Um, the fall, as we said, it's new beginnings, it's new starts, it's a new journey. And whenever this comes up in a reading, particularly if there are other cards around it, I mean, it does depend on the other cards, but if there are other cards that suggest a new beginning or the end of old ways going into the beginning of new ways, then it's an exciting card. Mm. Um, the only caution really with it that I would usually attach to this card is you are clearly unaware of any danger. Um, and that's what the dog is about, that's what the tiger is about, and, and also yeah. there's a crocodile on the, on the Thoth uh, card as well. It is that sort of warning to, as if to say, you are proceeding at the moment, you're moving forward, but you're moving forward in rather a blind way. Yeah. So innocence on the one hand is good, on the other hand, uh, you know, you do need a little bit of caution as you move forward into your new project or you, your new time in your life, um, you know, because you can be so full of excitement and so keen to move forward that you just... Yeah, go you, you, you can rush ahead on things. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I just wanted to point that out uh, while we were talking about the full card. Fantastic. So, don't be a fool. Join our Raven Mystic community on social media. If you like the video, click the subscribe button here on YouTube and join us on Facebook and various other social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>